Hello, I'm Becca Peters. I'm an expert facilitator in mindfulness, compassion, and self-compassion. About 30 years ago, when I was in my 20s, I was going through a really rough time in college. And one of my friends said, you should try meditation. I think that might really help you. And that was my first experience, maybe for the first time in my life, of actually feeling calm and at ease. And I maintained my meditation practice over the next 30 years, and I always knew that I wanted to do something in the world that would help people find ease in their life. And when I was in graduate school to become a licensed clinical social worker, one of the messages that I kept hearing from the psychological model was that there was something wrong with me or something wrong with you or anyone who's suffering, that there was something wrong or needed to be fixed. And I knew that that wasn't true. I knew from my mindfulness practice that that actually causes more suffering. And so I decided to get certified and get trained in mindfulness because I knew in my heart that life is meant to be enjoyed and not to be avoided. And we are here to meet ourselves with kindness and not to be criticized. And it was a gift in my world and I wanted to offer it to others. Mindfulness is a way of living. It's a way of being. It's attending to the present moment with certain qualities that are natural to all of us. The qualities of curiosity, kindness, non-judgment, and the willingness to be with things just as they are. Mindfulness is not trying to clear the mind or have a Zen experience all the time or to have no problems, and nor is it a magic pill for stress. Meditation is the formal practice of mindfulness, and we're going to practice that together in a few minutes. But let me just share with you what meditation is. It's really training the mind. It's a form of mind training. And would you believe in a recent study published by UCLA where they studied the brains of meditators and non-meditators of the same age, that the brains of meditators were seven and a half years younger. Meditation actually decreases atrophy of the brain. And not only does it decrease atrophy, it actually enlarges areas of the brain that are responsible for things like self-regulation, emotion regulation, attention, and general well-being. So why do we practice mindfulness and meditation? Beyond the benefits that I just shared with you, we also know there are tremendous physical benefits. A decrease in an inflammatory response, strengthened immune system, the possibility for a lower heart rate, lower blood pressure, and overall general well-being. And as we know, the mind-body connection is strong. So when we change one, we change the other. Whenever we practice mindfulness meditation, it's important to be comfortable and to take our seat. So let me guide you through how to get comfortable in your seat. You're welcome to sit on a meditation cushion as I am, or if you're not so flexible or feeling comfortable cross-legged, you're also welcome just to sit in a regular chair. If you're seated in a chair, the invitation is to have the soles of your feet on the floor in front of you, which may mean that you'll want to move a little bit forward in your chair if you're shorter. If you're choosing to sit on a cushion like I am, You'll want to make sure that your hips are propped up a little higher than your knees to avoid your legs falling asleep. The next thing is to notice, can I soften the belly? Can I relax the belly? Sometimes it can be helpful to bring our hands to our body to invite in relaxation and ease. Noticing your spine. Can your spine be upright and also relaxed? You can even shrug your shoulders or roll your shoulders a few times to your ears letting the shoulder blades gently fall down the back so that your chest is nice and open. Noticing your hand placement, you're welcome to let your hands rest gently on top of your thighs, clasped in your lap. You wanna make certain that whatever hand position you choose, your shoulder blades aren't moving forward. We wanna keep an upright spine. So taking a comfortable posture with your hands, and lastly, we spend so much of our time either looking down at our phones or our necks looking back at our computer screens. So we want to make sure that you can imagine a beautiful golden thread pulling from the top of your head. You feel length in the back of your neck and your chin is ever so slightly tucked. 
so we have an upright posture and we're also at ease. We know from the UCLA study that meditation has a direct correlation to enhancing things like attention, self-regulation, and emotion regulation. Why is that so? Most of us operate without a mindfulness or meditation practice in a fight or flight mode. When we feel a great amount of stress, it activates our sympathetic nervous system, which is activating the back of our brain, the reptilian part of our brain. With mindfulness and meditation, we find through research that the gray area, the gray matter of our prefrontal cortex is actually thickened. And this is the area that's responsible for clear thinking and decision making. And this is the area that is activated during meditation when our parasympathetic nervous system, which is also called rest and digest, when that system is activated in our central nervous system. Also, the amygdala, which is responsible for emotion regulation, is less activated during meditation. There are different types of meditation. One is focusing on the breath, and there's another type of meditation. It's called positive affect training. So go ahead and allow your eyes to close. Taking a few deep breaths again. And I'd like you to check in with yourself. You might ask yourself, how am I doing? And is there anything that I need today to really support myself? Is there an attitude or a mindset that I might practice today to support my well being? So as you turn your attention within, just notice when you ask yourself, what do I need today to really support myself? For some of us, it might be being gentle with ourselves. Or maybe it's to invite in more relaxation and ease. Whatever you've chosen, you can commit to the day. Every time you feel stress or you feel some type of discomfort to remind yourself of your aspiration, your personal commitment for the day. So when you wake up in the morning, check in with yourself. How am I doing and what do I need? And then commit to that particular mindset for the day to support yourself all through the day. And as you lie down in bed in the evening time, you have a moment to reflect upon the successes and celebrate the times that you were gentle with yourself, that you took the best care of yourself, and celebrate your well-being.